well, well. <laughs> and this is what you get if you play basically one trick pony deck that can be absolutely hard countered because it's so popular that literally every game is against this kind of deck. Whatever I will take, I will probably cast it. Here it is. Oh, a land for me? Absolutely, thank you, my friend. And with Mirex it's enough if we slow them down, because then they will have to defend against this. Well, definitely a strong one, but you know what? I don't have enough mana, so we kill it. And suddenly, I should use this mana by the way, but it's not like we're using it. Enjoy! <laughs> and now we have a ramp. So, and now we can go for a different plan. Uh, do we go for four? Hello everyone, it's Love here and today a very special video. First we will start as a removal tribal. You know the idea behind the deck. However, uh, it turned out into something different as we kept going on the ladder. So you will see today uh, absolutely unedited experience. Every ordering of the games will be exactly as they were played and every game will be included so you know, like you get the full experience because for this type of video it's very really interesting and honestly we will just talk more in the out a little bit if you are interested because I don't want to spoil anything and there will be something that you will notice probably during the games but yeah that's later we'll also do some very very interesting math that even if you are not a math person will keep you interested I think but it's it will be in the outro right now just enjoy the deck it will be fun so have fun guys and if you aren't subscribed we are very close to 15k so yeah maybe this is the day I would really appreciate you on the channel uh, let's go into games and have fun guys all right guys we are going first and we have removal into pest control and I was never so excited to see an aggro deck but this is Jin Gitaxias is even Jin Gitaxias is playing aggro man I nearly wanted to hesitate for a moment like what's wrong with me so this will be a a Boros with life gain version <laughs> oh they don't want to do anything resident reinforcements sure absolutely my friend we are already ready with the lockdown uh, so this won't hit the the two drop but it will hit everything else life gain absolutely ignored so i want to see a little bit more uh, before i use my removal we will see the, i could kill it uh, to prevent the knight of Eos for three but they can just play a land and they will steal knight of Eos. it will be just you know marginally wonkier uh, and it's better to kill knight of Eos with go for the throat i think they have it and they are considering the options and man like we are prepared <laughs> we are absolutely prepared uh, we probably start with the lockdown right because it hits everything here it is so uh, just to clarify this is their best nearly opening uh, outside of gleeful demolition so we don't really need to do anything here uh, we give them the selection they probably will go for one drop here and then we kill knight around of Eos. we lock down everything and we say well try again and he might order the scoop because the game is so simple uh, vanguard that's not something you normally play in this deck all right we will kill knight of Eos. knight of Eos. is that like humans with knight of Eos? But they have red. Is that possible they only have it for recruiter? Honestly, it could be the thing. And you know what? Listen, I'm ready with my Shelly. <laughs> because uh, this kind of deck is super aimed at their own place. And the downside is that they might not have too much place. But to be honest, they probably main phase Vanguard, play Case, and kill Shorded with... Well, they need resort reinforcements, right? Because it's five toughness. So I will I will risk it because they need a perfect combination of two cards. If they just go with the Vanguard. All right, double Vanguard. I mean, they already lost the game. Uh, they will probably full swing. No. Well, 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 well. <laughs> And this is what you get if you play basically one trick pony deck that can be absolutely hard countered because it's so popular that literally every game is against this kind of deck. So, uh, I mean, our opponent is in some trouble. Uh, he, don't forget he might have a lockdown, so it might not be fully over. Uh, sorry, not lockdown, uh, get lost. I see, I see. So, 
Uh, we could kill it. But I'm not sure if we want to. This uh, makes indestructible, so they can still exile it. Until end of turn. I think we just main phase it. I don't super care about, you know, uh, dealing. I don't need to raise him. Like, I'm the value deck. I will win the long game. And exiling cards is not super great here. Sorry. Let's go like this. Uh, they can go resolve reinforcements, but it's so slow, so little. Uh, they're only out basically is Knight around of Eos in multiples. Because this deck can always get back into the game. Imagine they play resolve reinforcements into resolve reinforcements into one drop, Knight of Eos into, you know, basically full new hand. Uh, so this is where they are. And now they don't have enough creatures for case, so even if they have the case, they cannot kill Shelly, even if we block. Alright, yep, that, that's kinda expected. Oh, guys, I think he won't like our deck, you know? I, I have a lingering feeling that he might not like our deck. <laughs> it's literally designed to beat your deck, my friend. You can block. By the way, we are 23. I believe he never hit us the whole game. Yeah, he actually never hit us in the face, which is super wild when you think about it. Like, he opened with a one drop, man into double vanguard so if you can if you want to target and please stop touching it uh, their only out might be knight of Aeos in multiples or just uh, get lost against the lockdown but most versions do not play get lost all right here it is here it is but very soon they will start to you know lack cards and by lacking cards, I mean lack the life to survive the game. <laughs> My brain is just on autopilot very often. Uh, so, uh, we don't need. We could kill Talia if we really care, but I don't think we really care. Alright. I mean, if I attack him, like, how is he ever winning, man? Yep. That's a lot of damage. So, they will try to go for Lethal, but we are prepared with marches. If we hit a land, we would be able to... Well, no, not with Talia, right? Because we need 5 mana plus 1 plus 1. So it's 5 plus 2 is around 7. That's what my math tells me. Uh, let's see it. I want to keep instant in case they have the case. They need 2 creatures, so they need to play this into this. Uh, into the case. And then I kill one creature and then a shore that still lives and then they, they die, basically. All right. Man, they're going for even bigger lethal. Unfortunately for them, it won't work. Well, this is the only creature that will matter. Sure. I, I mean, I don't need to literally do anything here. But you know what? It's important to, you know, send the message, basically. So right now on this mana, we can go for three. Let's go for five. Just. Really? It's four. And my math, not very good, not very good. Okay, what do I know? Oh, <laughs> I tell you, my brain just absolutely lags out sometimes. Let's go for five and we exile the card. That was my, my idea when I made this play and then I forgot. It happens. All right, uh, we want to showcase our opponent that we are not going below 30 in this game. So. Enjoy my friend, you have no creatures, you are at minus two, three basically, and we are at 29 life. All right, here we go. Uh, that's how you hard counter Boros in standard. <laughs> and man, that was not close. All right, opponent goes first. Honestly, it's not the best hand. And see, every time it will just be red deck. It's always a red deck. Uh, let's go with a Ganja. And it also, it also will make uh, you know it less painful for us. Chick, chick is good. All right. So this was basically a free reign for our opponent. Uh, we will go with case of Corius, right? I don't want to main face anything, especially that we probably use March. Uh, Kumano is of course insanely good opening. So we are behind of where we should be just because of this value. Man, this card alone will deal by this turn four damage. Well, 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 well. 
This is definitely long goodbye. We need to get rid of Squee and we cannot exile it yet. So extra damage. Our opponent is not losing tempo, so every turn we are a little bit more behind of where we should be. And if I want to do something... I mean, they have to buff. Like, I think uh, preventing the buff of those creatures is more important uh, than uh, saving this one life. So we know. An awkward situation, but we can make it. Oh boy. It's really, really good at magic. That's, that's insane curve, man. So I can kill uh, the cheek potentially. Probably command, alright? Or we can exile showdown. Uh, I think we have to exile showdown and just go for the Godric. Uh, just because it's so hard. Like they are so incredibly tempo efficient so far uh, that we need to waste value just to match their tempo. I should know what the card is. It's either March Black or or the White March because cut down would be something we already cast probably. All right, you know what? I can see us winning this one, even though the cards didn't align very well. The mana was messy, and we don't really have what we want right now. Uh, March gets better every single turn. I want to force some reaction. Uh, so now they will pump something, which is not great, uh, but we need to live with it. Now you've done it. So we are exiling the cheek. We will be defending, so that doesn't matter uh, about blocking. Uh, but this way, uh, we can uh, later make a token to block Kumana, so it gives us a little bit better situation. However, because they can pressure us so hard from start to finish without missing a beat, they will be able to play this spell. If they had double monster stretch, it would be even worse, but they didn't. So we took the big hit for the turn. Oh, that's pretty decent. Alright, this is important. How do we play it out? If we exile everything, they cannot squee. I honestly think this is the play. Uh, let's take the white mana from Mirex. We take Colorless from Mirex. You know, we probably don't want to paint ourselves, but maybe. Just maybe. If they have play with fire, like we are very low on life total right now. This way we prevent everything basically. And with March, I think we can stabilize. This Samurai is actually pretty strong. But, but, we need to think. Okay, okay. I thought they, they will highlight this. But of course, it's better to hit the face because you also get the scry. And the whole reason the game is close is that they were on the play with extremely good curve and we were on our below average draw. So this difference alone even if you have deck entirely built to build to you now beat this deck, will make the game a little bit uh, closer. Like they have draws that if you don't have literally perfect answer at every turn, you will just automatically lose to. And this is what like th that's my gripe with the aggro. It really forces basically a game of hoping to draw correct cards, uh, which is you know not really something you can influence. So this is generally a little bit of a bad design when you have to win games by just drawing correct cards, basically. All right, I think this might be their last play, and I need full march. All right, like we can we can play. Uh, a little bit slower, right? I will make an upkeep stop and then I will think. I want to see the hes- Okay, there was no hesitation. I mean, absolutely no hesitation. So I'm going for five because I want to make sure that we hit it. This means every burn top deck is not good anymore because I think they don't, don't have instant right now. All right, back to six with a blocker. And with the... No, not enough, my friend. Everything was exiled. Sokenzan. Sokenzan is absolutely not uh, not meaningful here. And see how important this little samurai is? They didn't go for the double block even. Greedy, greedy, greedy. Uh, they can go for a squee, but now we can exile it permanently. At a very good rate. It also taps them, so we don't need to care about their, you know, the second thing. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to let them attack. 
even though we get one block, but they also create one creature, so it's exactly the same. Well, try again, my friend. And believe me, we have more stuff that kills creatures than he has creatures. <laughs> We, we might actually have more removal than he, he plays creatures, because the huge chunk of the deck is uh, buff spells. And he cannot really attack because of the samurai. He drew something. Well, this is really good for him. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. So this will probably trade for two cards, unfortunately. But I honestly think we need to keep it at bay. Uh, we, yeah, we will just throw something. A little Emperor is enough uh, to absolutely win the game. So, you know, we are in a bit of a top deck war, but our top decks are generally way better. And we can also use Mir. I mean, I could already live game. But I probably want those mites. If he whiffs for one turn, like now, uh, I already get a very good attacking power. It's slow, but it will get the job done. Uh, we do not cycle. I don't have anything that is better at the graveyard. And here we go. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. You know what? We can attack. No reason not to. Even if I draw creatures with haste, I'm not attacking with them. They will be for defending. I could double life game, honestly, but it's not worth it. So we go for four. Four cards should be enough. And that means I can also double spell potentially. I just need one card for his one drop. Whatever I will take, I will probably cast it. Here it is. Oh, a land for me? Absolutely, thank you, my friend. This is actually way better because now I can play Kumano faces Kakazan. Uh, and this is why we have those robberies in the deck still. Uh, we don't want to overdraw them, but sometimes they're good enough, you know? Uh, we don't have cards in the hand, so we decline. Like, it looks like a hand, but it's just being mono red here. And we can start with Pardon, which will mean... Man, I can actually play mono red against this guy. And we'll be better at mono red than he is. Alright, a land from top, but we can cycle it with Celestus. Not on this turn, probably. Uh, we definitely don't need so many Minexes. And we get the counter, because this is the second turn after Kumano. And that's 4 damage already. I think we will force cycle it. On the next turn we attack for so much, right? It's four, five, six. And play with fire in the hand. So that means we can just go for this. Well, even though this is such a funny situation, the tapper decides that this is my only red uh, land in the whole deck, so it has higher priority. But in fact, I don't have red cards. Uh, so it has the lowest priority. So we need to manual tap, because if we draw something that is one white mana, uh, we can play it. Let's cycle. Emperor is absolutely amazing, and it will mean that we win the game. Yeah, we can just play with fire his face and attack with everything. Yep, and man, we even won against this kind of opening with honestly below average uh, play. So I'm not casting it right now because I want to attack first, they will be greedy and they will try to go for my face if they have a burn spell, and then the, they will realize that it's too late. Oh, man, they're actually... Okay, that, that explains it. Uh, this, you know, doesn't have a target at face, so they kind of have to do it. So, four, five, six, seven. So I cannot kill him on this turn, sure. Sure. Uh, that means I don't need to do it now. I can do it at now because it's sorcerer speed for Celestus. <laughs> I knew about it, alright? I knew about it. Uh, but I want to double flip. This will get us to 9. You can see how insane this deck is against aggro decks. Even on below average draw, you still absolutely do it. I don't need better cards, like those are amazing. Back to 9. So honestly, even if we don't defend with anything, he cannot burn us anyway. This and Monster Strike is what, 5 damage? Like, we don't even care, man. Squee. That's a squee. You know what? I will show him a little bit of business. Uh, sure. We, we are making the token anyway. So it's not really for blocking, it's just for sending the message. So my plan was to create 
token, then plus it, so it's 7 damage and play with fire this. So that would be a great thing. As you can see, it's really easy to rank up, you just need to play removal. Okay, this this is getting a little... We just need to hit the land. Land is absolutely crucial for our survival. Like, if we miss land for... Like, I wouldn't take this hand on the, on the play, probably. But on the draw, it should be good enough. Extremely important. Probably the most important draw of the whole game. Uh, Abzan. Interesting. This could be a control deck. I don't recall too much aggro Abzan, to be absolutely honest. Let's go with Celestus. We definitely need the extra mana. Uh, they have green, so, you know, it can die at the end step for, like, tear asunder or something. It seems that we are both, you know, playing... A deck that is designed to survive against aggro, basically, <laughs> which is the only other deck. But th that's that's funny. I guess we went too hard on the aggro decks. Oh, the the cycling is huge. I really enjoy the cycling. So we would miss a land, and thanks to the cycling, we didn't. All right, all right, all right, all right. I can go for three cards with robbery, or I can go Akrazot and force a removal. This will ramp us. This might be the Emperor turn, so I kind of want to apply some pressure. Uh, they cannot white march uh, because it's too expensive, so this will at least be 2 for 1, right? And if they sunfall, that means they waste the full turn. So that means I can do basically the same thing, but with one land more. So I think it's a good play. Even if this dies, I'm fine with it. I think it might be a sunfall. Okay, so... It really feels like an emperor, huh? Really feels like an emperor. Oh man. But they have they had time, right? They had four mana. I can kill it with go for the throat. And I still get the card. Listen, I have to go with it. They had moment to play. So we played Akra. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe they did this. Uh, because they've seen Akrazot and then they could uh, make a decision if they want the Emperor. If they played it, yeah, it's such a good answer that I think we chill with this a little bit. We have Mirex, so we are getting, you know, ahead more and more. And with Double Robber, we can outvalue them. This is one of the reasons we have it in the deck. Like, this gives us hope against, you know, control matchups. And, like, we are getting a lot of value every turn. Even if we don't do anything, like, it still looms over the the horizon and with mirex it's enough if we slow them down because then they will have to defend against this well definitely a strong one but you know what i don't have enough mana so we kill it and suddenly i should use this mana by the way but it's not like we're using it enjoy <laughs> and now we have a ramp so and now we can go for a different plan uh, do we go for four we could also shoulder it, but I think they have removal, they just didn't want to use it. Is Mirax alone good enough? Listen, I will go for this because I want more lands. This way we are guaranteed to draw more lands, right? And we even got the Mirax. Yeah. This will... Man, we are basically both playing a full removal live game deck, basically. Uh, I will take... Takenuma. I really want as much mana as possible. Uh, we can double Mirex on this turn already. That's absolutely glamorous. We okay, we need to start using Mirex because their deck is probably higher value than ours. Uh, so we need to start going as soon as possible. Uh, they already played Boseju, so they don't have this way of solving the problem. And just like this. And this is why I wanted all this extra mana with Akrazot and stealing uh, with the robber. Extremely bad draw. Probably the worst one of the deck. Uh, it, it is a dead card uh, that actively hurts us. And if we try to cycle up the Beanstalk with it somehow, uh, it actually will go back to him. One good guy. Okay, super great. So, this is the moment where he starts to use spot removal against Mirex and Mites. And he still doesn't have enough. Uh, I still didn't see this Emperor, but maybe they just don't have it. There, that, is, that is a legit option that they never had the Emperor. Oh man, this is getting sad. Oh, I sp on, so I'll, I'll tell you exactly what it should mean. This should mean this they don't have removal anymore. 
because this is way better card later. So if they use it now, that means they don't have removal. Maybe they have go for the throws that cannot hit artifacts. It really feels like it. Uh, I'm not sure if that's what is happening, but this is how you generally interpret th those kind of plays. So if you assume that your opponent plays perfectly, you just got information exactly about his hand. And listen, I don't need to do anything. That's why we play four Mirexes. And right now we actually play five Mirexes because one is stolen. Oh, and the stolen version is foiled. I absolutely love it. All right, all right, all right. Good for them, good for them. Still, uh, it's very good for us as well. So no point in making mice. We will just go with seven cards from their deck. Seems pretty good to me. <laughs> I hope he plays robbers. Thank you. I hope that I will steal one of his deck because I don't think I have more. So as you can see, even if you meet a, a full removal control, uh, you can still outbeat them because I included some value. Those robbers are sneakily important. And as you can see, this is probably the only thing you need to hit Mephic. Just play removal and, you know, a, a robber or two. All right. We are starting to be more on the draw lately. So I think we are performing good. This is... Oh my god. Guys, we did it. We actually met the Jace avatar that is playing non-red deck. Man, that is scary. And it's so funny because we beat all the aggro decks and suddenly I got two control decks in a row. Uh, but that's just a coincidence, right? Uh, but that was weird because I usually only play against uh, aggro decks lately. And uh, this is not great. So this will be a big problem for us probably. We have the Mirex, but he already has Demolition Field. Uh, so I think we have to just go with Celestus and you know, we are rolling with it. We have a lot of cards to cycle, especially the lockdowns. Long Goodbye can be a good card. They might play Jin or something. I'm not sure what exactly they are playing. It, it might just be normal Azor's control. Like, it kind of feels like one. You know, not the main version on the ladder, but this is the one that is closer to what I want. Hmm. Can we beat this? I guess we can sneak a robber or two, so we will try it. But it's actually incredible how how we are starting to see way, way more, uh, you know, uh, way more moment. My brain is on the different mode. Let's make the samurai. Uh, how suddenly we only see control decks. That's crazy. It's, it's just a coincidence, so it's fine. Uh, so let's see if he goes for some big plays right now. Okay, get lost, sure. We have another Emperor, but now they have a counter spell. Uh, we are both not cycling with the Celestus. Uh, we are kind of holding each other hostage. Oh, that, that's good for him. Still, he needed to use this card, and we will cycle this card. So we will get a small card advantage here and there. But so will he, and we cannot remove Celestus. Okay, with this draw... Like, I will try, guys, but with this draw, it's actually probably game losing. He really didn't like Emperor though. Listen, I will try. I will try. He really invested a lot into beating the last Emperor. So I will try to make sure that he cannot do it again. And if he attacks with the Anchor... Oh, I don't have enough black cards. Because I would actually cycle. Like, I would cycle. I want to show that I have priority on one mana that is possibly black. Uh, because I want the cut down uh, threat. That hopefully will, you know, make him less likely to activate the Anchor because this is a really good answer right now to what we have. I need to untap to not care about it. All right, another get lost. See I see, I see. Let's see if that will be another lockdown. Demolition field. Yeah, I guess, I guess. See, we have three more. And let's go for... It doesn't matter at all. Let's go for white mana, just because all I see is lockdown. A little bit problem, that, because I want to cycle those cards, but then he also cycles his cards, and this kind of puts him ahead. Because his cards are better than ours, especially with a draw like this. I could attack with Fortis, but it's so bad that we, we really shouldn't do it. I need to draw into those Mirexes, thank you. This is exactly what I hoped for. And we'll use this. 
You know what? This is a very weird play, but in this case we need some red mana for this play. Uh, just because if he kills uh, Celestus with like a march, for example a dance step, that will force us to use Virex and I really wanted a dance step. I mean we got two extra cards with those map tokens, so that really puts us ahead of where we should be. And now he has no demolition field anymore. Alright, I mean we are trying our best. I kinda forgot that we didn't cast anything, but it's something that would happen anyway. Man, I'm so clogged with all the lockdowns. Like I drew three of them in top 17 cards. Like that's way above average. And of course in this matchup this is a dead card. And he has memory dirge for the next turn, so we will be very very behind. We probably normally I would just go all in on cycling Celestus, but that's the problem. I then give him even more value than I get. Like I might at the best get Mirex, and he can get the rest of his deck. So he doesn't like counter spurs. Yeah, I guess for him lockdowns make some sense. So if he had lockdown, he would probably still prefer to get uh, rid of you know, no more lies. Oh, they're going for it. Told you, told you. They have those. They have this play, and we do not. If they double spell, they get the value. If they don't, they don't get the value. But at least we are keeping the pressure up. Like I, I would love to draw second Mirex and just go double token. Like we need to keep the aggression, you know, basically all the time right now. And that means I cannot activate the fortress. It will probably be not about the damage, but about, you know, the other thing, the poison things. I honestly think we won't win, because uh, our deck scales too slowly in this opening. Like, we have basically full hand of that draw. Like, literally, we could have zero cards and it would be basically the same as what we have. Uh, we don't have robbers, we don't have even uh, more emperors, and we don't have backup Celestus, so, you know. Uh, on the rough side, if they try to block with this, we just kill it. That's something we are really good at, killing creatures. Uh, so let's go for caves, and I mean we keep the, we keep the attack. Oh, this is probably the memory Dirge turn. Yeah, this is memory Dirge. but at least we get the poison stacks right. I cannot go with the, with the fortress because then when they sun for something, our Minix is just worse, and it doesn't do anything really. So let's see the memory Dirge and see the selection. Uh, they can take this damage, so it's a good play for them. And they will probably chain into another memory dirge. So from now on until end of the game, uh, we'll only fight for tempo and not for uh, for the value. They have infinite value basically. It's interesting. They took Mirex probably. That would be very weird if they just top decked it. So I think that should be one of the cards they took. But we'll try, we'll try. Uh, we also didn't hit White March, which could uh, disable Celestus, so our draw is extremely on the bad side, even for this kind of deck, you know? Oh boy, more lands. Definitely not what we want, but something we will take. At least we'll, they cannot go with the Emperor. If that's an Emperor, we will be in some trouble. And it seems to be the Emperor. I mean, we... Flanker? Flanker is easier. Alright, probably life gain and scry. Because if, it's still 5 damage, right? So let's give them the selection first, but let's not allow to block. I wonder, I would really love them to use this, but they probably won't. And I might use long goodbye. No, I think uh, it's actually better to use long goodbye here. Uh, because if they no more lies us, I actually don't want to pay. Emperor, sure. That's fine, but what is the play? I'm not I want to make sure that I have enough mana for Mirex. Oh, they're going for this. It's actually better for me, because then I can use March for one. Interesting, they expect a lot of removal then. But that means they kind of wasted the Emperor. I actually love it. So we need two mana. That so I cannot play the fortress, man. I'm so happy I didn't play fortress then. We have enough removal. So now we need to march for a single point of mana. 
because that kills the Emperor and denies the next thing while keeping the Mirex mana. Like, we need to keep pressuring. Man, I probably like triple spelled, right? Yep. Uh, so they will get the Celestus. I would love to have, you know, a White March and the Zybulet, like exactly what he did. Uh, because we both play four marches. Where is the March? Oh, here it is. I didn't, uh, re you know, uh, get the art. All right, this is extremely good for him. Uh, against Mirex, this is as good as it gets. And uh, our opponent is drawing very well so far. The Deuce. I don't think we'll be able to get rid of this. Uh, lockdown's of course extremely bad, but because uh, our opponent was better at drawing marches than us, uh, we couldn't uh, get the lockdowns out. And unfortunately, man, I might start uh, long good buying this. It's actually so important. I need to keep the pressure, man. And we have the perfect mana, so I'm long good buying the other token. It's way too important. If they have another Emperor, I think I cannot beat it, but I need to take this risk. Like, at some point, if they don't whiff and we whiff too hard, like, we cannot beat it. They have it. Yeah, and that's probably the game. I think they might go for minus one right now. I am the Emperor of Kamigawa, and I will right? My... No, they're going for minus two. Alright. That puts them at seven poison. That's kind of big deal overall. Let's go for the fortress. We need... Man, we need around... 10, 14 mana a turn just to activate our lands. So, yeah, the lands are kind of useful. The second Anchor might be a huge deal. I wonder, they should make a token. Absolutely. This is super important for them. Keep watch for intruders. And I mean, there is a chance that they don't have the third Emperor, right? Yep. They are going for the clue. They have still have so much mana, man. This the fact that they kept Celestus and we didn't uh, is one of the big reasons we are behind. Like that was a, such a huge deal, especially sad that we are doing only removal, uh, but we still draw the wrong one. So it's like the the bad draw on top of the bad draw. So it's it's really unfortunate, and that gives him so much value. Over the game, it probably is the reason he won, because he will never lack answers thanks to Celestus. And I'm I'm drawing more lands. Okay, we need to kill it. That means the Anchorage is probably enabled right now, so he can still keep trading, it just costs him more mana. And I mean, we have to attack. It's unfortunate, if he starts activating the Anchorages right now, we are in extremely but oh my god really the third one like this celestus and emperors are the reason uh, he's in the game so hard eight poison but you can see even with such a bad draw against such a good draw we are still super close to winning and uh, let's pump this one because this is the last card he wants to pump uh to kill sorry Final Showdown is actually a good good card, but now they know about it, which is unfortunate. Listen, this is how we go. This is how we go about it. Uh, I will take the Showdown because that protects one of the mites, but it might be a problem. We have, we have a lot of... Oh my god. Can you like whiff, please, during this whole game? Yeah, like, uh, it's, it's kind of frustrating, not because of the, you know, control deck. Of course they have good uh, good value, and generally they should be winning. Uh, the problem is that I'm really trying, and every turn I'm on the verge of getting it. And every turn it's just one step behind, basically. He's three steps ahead, we are one step behind. Uh, so I'm going with it. Uh, also, he got the demolition field. Which is really good, it gets rid of the showdown and also for, uh, gets rid of the Mirex. So really, man, it's, it's actually insane that we are having such a close game against a deck that absolutely should outvalue us and also has incredibly strong draw. Oh man, it just took us 10 turns to get there. 
So he has four mana. He probably doesn't have the last emperor, right? Oh man, this is not a good situation to be in. I can double fortress and just go absolutely all in. And honestly, I think this is the best call. I think we we lack in the real place. We just need to go with this one. Listen, what can we do other than this? Let's see how much removal he stacked at instant speed. At least he cannot kill the fortresses. Like the damage will stack really hard on this. And suddenly he needs to defend both on the damage because he will be at what, six? and at the poison. The poison kills him, so he needs to block here, but then uh, the rest of the damage hits. Yeah, he will be at 5. Uh, I don't think that will be enough. Honestly, I think we lost, but, you know, I'm I'm trying to give him a run for money. Are you serious? Okay, I don't want to play this. How can you be so good to draw 4 of them already? Alright, guys, we are going first. first. And let's see it. Uh, definitely a swamp. This might be our second white mana, so let's keep it as long as possible. And suddenly, man, this is actually incredible. This is third control deck in a row. After we absolutely beat aggro decks, suddenly I see more control decks on the ladder. Uh, but it's, it's just a coincidence, so it's fine. Alright. Fortunately, we are kind of prepared with the army of Mexes. Uh, but it's actually incredible. Man, this is a third control deck in a row. How fun it is. Uh, so we could go with the Emperor, but if they have no more lights and they, they always have it, uh, we are in some trouble, so we probably need to go for this. And don't forget, if they play Emperor right now, uh, we can kill the token, so they don't get the value there at least. We cannot play our Emperors, we got also Mana Screw, just to be sure. All right, I mean, I'm keeping up the pressure. Memory Dush. so they will try to hit the Emperor, but maybe we can get them behind on tempo. Like, don't forget, Emperor is super expensive, and we can kill the tokens very efficiently. I mean, if we keep missing clans, it won't matter. Of course, easy. So they're going for the greedy version. Uh, so I need at least one extra mana on the next turn because then I can still keep making me eggs. If I don't draw a land, uh, it means that I already lost a lot of tempo. And of course I did. Of course. Why wouldn't I? I mean, go for the throat is as good, right? How do I back? Alright, I go this and now I can cancel. Alright. So. Not looking great already. We have to go for the throw then. And that means that if he sweeps this, now we cannot keep up with the with the thing. It also means we probably need to hit the Emperor, which is uh, even more unfortunate. And they seem to be having... Oh my god, they also have... Uh, what? A White March. And that's what uh, made me change my mind. If I attack the Emperor, one of the Marches would hit. And that would be a really bad deal. Now they will sunfall. Or even lockdown, which is even better. Honestly, I think we are in such a bad position right now that we have to go for this play. Uh, we will exile one of the cards. Is it pest control that can be cycled? I don't think... Like, we are a bit late on the Emperors here. Let's just go with it. Uh, they can still normalize it. In which case, uh, we absolutely cannot do anything. Uh, they have one field of ruin, but we have double Mirex. Well, it's it's incredible. But do you know what's also incredible? Outside of, you know, the matchmaking. <laughs> well, you are. For staying until then. So thank you. You are really appreciated. And what about the deck and the, the whole thing? Uh, I promised you that we'll talk about some stats. Uh, but give me a moment, we'll start with different things. The obvious elephant in the room is that we started playing against the aggro as we always do, like since especially like two or three days, it feels that it's very hard for me to even have one game that isn't aggro uh, because it's just Boros and Monoret uh, like alternating be between every game. And suddenly like we played those first two games, we absolutely destroy aggro decks and then Abzan, or I think it was Abzan control, right? Not Orzov. And uh, like we, we still managed to win and suddenly Azorius into Azorius. 
Uh, and it seems that, you know, we are having a lot of Azorius control on the channel, but do you know what the actual share in uh, in the Diamond League that I'm in right now is for the Azorius control? I will go check just to make sure that I have the perfect stats. All right, I'm back with all the new knowledge that I will shine upon you. So the chance of seeing Azorius control in Diamond, as you can see on the stats on the right, uh, is 7.2%. That means having two of them in a row is actually around half percent. So <laughs> that means in you need 200 games to get this kind of two games in a row. All right, uh, I, I think that's kind of interesting. You know, we won't go into, you know, deeper math or the, you know, theories, all this kind of stuff. You know, the serious talk is that we don't know. It's random things uh, work in a different, you know, in a weird way. So sometimes something that is super unexpected is just an outcome of a truly random thing. And listen, if you ever played XCOM and try to hit this perfect shot for 1% and somehow it hit, you know that those things might happen, all right? So that's about it about the percentages in action. So no, don't take it too seriously, but I find it entertaining to talk about it. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this little bit of experiment. I think it was interesting to talk about it a little bit. And yeah, curious to hear your thoughts about this one. And I hope you had great fun. And yeah, this might be your new mythic deck somehow. I don't know how it works, but it seems to be doing it. So thank you guys for watching and see you tomorrow.